Never in Nigeria's history as a republic had there been so much discourse, anticipation and expectations of what a new year would bring, as is the case for the year 2016. Channel's business editor, Bosun Omofaye, gave us a sneak peek of what Nigeria's economy may look like in the new year. Nigeria, Africa's largest economy and a leading global oil and gas producer, experienced a historic political transition in 2015. The change of guards presented the citizenry a new field of administration, dwindling oil prices, shrinking revenue, and a foreign exchange market turmoil. As the government plans to revamp the economy in the new year, three scenarios are likely to play out. Dr. Biodun Adedipe, an economist, presents an optimistic outlook. I see in 2016 in the Nigerian economy that we continue on the recovery path, which had started actually in the third quarter of 2015. And my take on that is simply this. Now, if you look at the structure of the economy in terms of the dominant sectors, that is, you see uh, mining and quarrying, ICT, real estate, agriculture, trade, and of course, uh, manufacturing. Now, looking at those, what happened between December 2014 and September 2015? Now, the significance of those six sectors improved from 77.7% to 80.2 percent. The pessimistic view of how the economy might perform is based on the current state of the economy, government's projections and the global forecasts. My fear is that while the principle of a counter-cyclical stimulus budget makes sense in the context of policy um, and the difficulty in articulating sensible policy across oil subsidies, across exchange rates, across all of these variables, that budget may be imperiled by government's own policy. So um, the outlook is not clear. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we will realign those elements of policy. We make a choice. You know, economics is often about making the least bad of several bad choices. The problem is that we are not we are not choosing the least bad. We are trying to create something that appears impossible. The middle of the road viewpoint, however, says, don't take your foot off the pedal. 16 is going to be a better year than 2015. 2015 was a was a toilet year, right? It was no good. Uh, everything went belly up. Now, in 2016, we, we hit the bottom, and we're going to be moving forward. From a macroeconomic, a business, and investment perspective, three things are going to happen. One that we're going to have sustained low oil prices, but going upwards marginally, right? So even though our benchmark price is $38 a barrel, we expect prices to go back up into the 40s and maybe early 50s. Um, we think that production is going to be a major challenge. We're not going to go anywhere near 2.2 million barrels a day, but we'll probably do 1.8, 1.9, and that's fair enough. We're going to see um, sustained effort in terms of man keeping the Nigerian fiscal house in order. And we're going to see some basic adjustment to factor prices. The state of the Nigerian economy in 2016 is at best anyone's guess. The expectations and the concerns of the citizens are high, and the challenges the Buhari's administration faces are equally enormous as the clock ticks into a new year. For further details to what uh, the economy holds for the country in 2016, I'm being joined on the News at 10 by Professor Patitomi. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us at this time. This is what we know. The primate of the Anglican Church of Nigeria, Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, has asked Nigerians to strive for integrity and good options in 2016. Is integrity an image concern for Nigeria? Let's begin with that. Well, certainly, um, the important thing is to establish upfront that integrity is hard currency. It's important in business, 
it's important in how society organizes itself. Um, I, I hate to keep going back to some book that was written years ago on corruption and development in Africa. And, and the authors opened by saying that uh, corruption runs the spectrum in Africa from Botswana, where it's very rare, to Ghana, where it's widespread, and Nigeria, where it is systemic. You can imagine that anybody trying to do business with Nigeria will be a lot more careful. And this results in high transaction costs. So a Ghanaian business will certainly be more competitive than a Nigerian one ordinarily because of perceptions of integrity. Uh, so integrity matters. And it's, it's got to be something that we invest a lot in trying to build because reputation is not end overnight. If you consistently say you're going to do something and you do that, the integrity quotient builds up. But when you are not reliable, you can generate a lot of transaction costs in enterprise. And even in public life, if people don't trust you, many of the wars that have been fought in this world have been fought on misperception, which comes from the absence of integrity. Because if people could trust that what somebody said was exactly what they meant, then it would be much easier to uh, do business with those persons of any sort. If I may just ask you, what's your take? What's, what's your economic outlook for 2016? Well, uh, tw 2016 is a year that's going to be full of challenges. But for me, challenges mean opportunity. I, I think that our country's economy, its structure has been so poor for so long that the challenges of 2016 hopefully will force us to do the needful in terms of changing the general thrust of this economy. Um, we all know about oil prices which have gone south and have resulted in many uh, uh, activities of government being severely challenged. Professor now, Parker there are speculations that it could go as far down as 20 or $16. Now, if prices go to those levels, surely we will be forced to recognize that Nigeria has greater advantage in many things that are not oil-based and can create an economy that has greater possibilities than this oil-based, oil-dependent economic um, arrangements of today. Um, so just that alone, which is a big threat to many people, is for me an opportunity. And the main news again. There were celebrations and festivities as the world welcomed 2016. Nigerians have expressed optimism of having a prosperous new year despite revealing social, economic and security challenges. And the primate of the Anglican Church of Nigeria and other clergymen have advised Nigerians to live dear lives of integrity while shunning acts of corruption. And to bring back our girls, campaigners have called on the federal government to establish special search teams to rescue the kidnapped Chibok girls. And two people have been killed as gunmen open fire at the bar in Tel Aviv in Israel. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. It's the first day of the year 2016. Being ushered in, I want to thank you so much indeed for being part of the news at 10 tonight. Good night.